How can you salmon run? Um, a dead fish here. That's what's What? There's really thousands of them. You can see them the whole way down to the lake. They're in the lake. YouTube world welcome to our video on slab prep part two we are so excited about this radiant heat that we're getting installed in the floor part of it I, I mean if you haven't been in a house that has radiant heat in really cold weather in the radiant heat in the floor it's like it's I would say the ultimate house luxury because there's just, it eliminates all the draftiness. Not that we're gonna have much of that, but it gets all the temperature the same from floor to the ceiling. And it, for babies and littles on the floor, that's something I always worry about is how cold the floor is for them being on the floor. Yeah, and it, mod it, it moderates it too. Like this concrete slab having the heat in it will help the temperature stay steady. You, and it's just it's so comfortable. And doing this ourselves is why we can do it, why we can afford it, you know. You can see I've got my helpers um, at Graham and Atticus helping to get this insulation down, help to bounce that heat back up. It's fun to see sort of a culmination of a lot of work, a lot of preparation happening. You know, all that dirt work underneath was, it was immense. To, to get that solid and flat so that I could get to this point. Um, I'm, re I'm doing this video just a couple months later, but uh, remembering how much work it took to get here is fun to see. If you have a radiant floor system in your house, would you comment and tell me what you think? And then also tell me what you think about the one we're installing. You think we're doing it right? Because this is just me sort of making it up as I go. This is one of the days I didn't have the boys helping me and putting the pecs down by myself just wasn't working. So I had to build my hex dispensing machine here. It's just a lazy Susan bearing with those two by fours crossed and then a bucket screwed down in the middle. Um, and even then it really, it was so much slower working this by myself and I had to, this is just a short segment, um, doing the stapler, the foam stapler without the boys was just too slow. I found something else to go work on that needed to be done. And then we came back the following day to finish it up. In short order, 
with their help. Um, it's been really fun to watch the growth of the boys as they've helped me do this work. How they, the responsibility seems to change them and also the knowledge, like the knowledge that they get from what they're doing seems to change them in good ways. So also, just as an aside, some of these things they're better at than I am. And, and it's convenient, you know, that they're better at it than I am. For example, you'll see later in the video where they're tying my rebar for me. And it, it's not that hard for them to sit on the ground and, and do little twists and rebar. And they're faster and better at it than I am. But if I was to do it, it would have been so much longer and I would hurt from it where they don't, they don't hurt. And they actually kind of enjoy it because I put on a book on the radio and they just, they love listening to a book while they, while they do jobs like that. It doesn't really require any direct supervision. You know, they're self-governing in that task. This whole time I'm having to I mean, before I got weight on the foam, I had to, I, you saw I had to move rebar around and lumber because the wind was blowing so fast as we're going to undo my work with the foam. Um, rebar is not required in, in my slab, but I'm doing it just to prevent cracking because we want this concrete to be our floor. I don't want to cover the concrete. I want to stain it or we're doing epoxy or something on the on the concrete and so we're trying to keep it from cracking badly right there that, that's them twisting right yeah they're already right in the back there they're they're tying that rebar for me another thing was I didn't have to tie every intersection but it was easier just to t you can do every other one but just because they're so so good at it and the ties are so cheap and it's harder to keep track. I didn't even tell them that they didn't have to tie all of them. I just let them tie all of them. So all that rebar gets tied. And they were proud when they came home and told me about it. They were proud with their did. with their little black hands. Yeah. <laughs> covered in covered in Dirty. like the oil from the ties. Yeah, they were proud of it. It was so cool. That it was fun fun working with them. And and when we got to work in the shade like that, it wasn't too bad. The heat bouncing off that back wall can, it was pretty hot at this point. Well, Paris is, you know, putting all of his energy and time and focus on getting this house built so we can move into it, um, you know, as soon as possible. I, it's been really hard for me since we own the land, actually, to not be able to start working the land. Like that's, that's one of the biggest um, reasons for moving out here and getting all this acreage is, is so that we can grow food and, and have this agrarian lifestyle that we want and, um, you know, be more self-reliant and, and develop all these forgotten skills. Um, and, and those things take a lot of time, especially trees. That's the one thing I've really wanted to work on, but our soil here is, is really clay and, um, 
there's like very little organic matter. It was traditionally farmed and it, it kind of depleted all of the, the life and the topsoil in it. Um, so that takes a lot of work and it's really hard when we don't live there. Um, so that's been, that's just been really challenging for me. I keep thinking all these ways that I could do something, go out there and do something and just get it, get things going um, while we're not living there. But it really just, you know, Paris brings me back to reality <laughs> sometimes and, and it's really just not feasible when we don't live there. Part of, part of it's hard because we, we are going to do a geothermal heat yeah. loop in the ground to heat the house. And so I'm going to tear up the whole backyard. It's, there's probably an acre and a quarter, acre and a half back there, but we have horizontal loops for our geothermal system and I haven't installed them yet. And so we don't want to start planting trees in the area that we're going to dig up. Right. And I have to go pretty deep for those heat loops. And so it's going to be a pretty massive digging operation. We can plant above them, which is great, so we don't yeah. lose the ground. After we get them in, yeah. it'll just it'll be like they're not there. They're deep enough that they won't affect anything. Um, but it's made it so we've waited yeah. to plant trees. Yeah, so, so I'm going to be, I guess my focus this next year, as I've been pondering and, and studying what I can do is um, at this point, at least my plan is to work on the perimeter and build the soil um, in the perimeter with cover crops and just building organic matter so that the trees have a better chance of surviving when we do plant them. The other thing was we just got a well in last fall, yeah. but we had to run the generator to get water out of it. So that's a, that made it hard for planting. I'm doing a pressure test. We got the compressor going, filling this up. Let's see if it's okay. Slowly going up. It's a lot of pipe to fill for that compressor. Um, I built these manifolds today. Um, and I'll pump this up maybe to 90 psi, maybe 100, and leave it overnight and see if I lose air. Probably will have some pipe expansion, but anyway, that's that's the plan. No leak so far. We are pretty much ready for concrete. I mean, I'm gonna wrap some of this seam sill seal around my ABS pipes. Um, which will take about five minutes. I've done my pressure test. See, I'm at 90 psi there. Um, if I open that, a lot of air would come out, or those two valves, but would do the same. Um, so these are my manifolds. I made this gap here because this is the house and this is the garage and so i can separate that when i build the system and put the system together my boys tied all my rebar these pipes were straight not that it matters now they heat up and then they expand and then they get all crooked so i've got to come back and add a bunch of staples which i'll probably do right now um, Got all the rebar run and tied. Um, oh, I need to put a box around that shower green. I just realized that. Um, that's important. I got to remember that. And I got a chalk lines for the height around the edges. But that's it. Um, you can seal, see my sill that that's how high the concrete will go and uh, I got that in the garage too and it's about a six inch step up from the garage to in here so first we'll pour the living space and the next day we'll pour the garage and uh, that's it
Talk to me first. Wait, oh, you caught the turtle right here? Yeah. Wait, tell me, um, how long have you had him? About two days. About two You said him turtle feet, food, and what else? I had beer fish. He ate him for my fingers. I got let it go into the water. And we're setting him back free, huh? Please don't be swallowed by a fish like the cameraman. That would be a big, big fish. Are there any fish around here? Oh, flip. Bubbles. It's okay. There's no fish big enough to eat that turtle. There he goes. Think about how happy he is now. Uh, Attic, lock, so come happy. back, please. Reptiles don't care about survival. Oh. They, they totally yeah, they do. Oh, look, there's a turtle over there. Oh, look, it's Where? Mossy. I, um, Mossy, Jeff and Blue are watching. 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 Mossy, Jeff and Blue are he doesn't not hate us. He doesn't... Yeah. We took pretty good care of him. Yeah, we took pretty good care of him. It's a her. Okay, time to go, guys. I wish we could keep it.